The following is a paid program and does not necessarily reflect the views or ideas of the staff or management of KWSH or the 110 Broadcast Group. Over here, here's my head. Hey, just hoping everybody's doing well today, Tuesday. Uh, yeah, the October now. I keep saying, I want to say September, but it's still October. Which you should know, uh, yesterday was a, a great day for all of us. It's a great, great day for any of us uh, that are within the Seminole Nation Reservation and throughout Indian Country. Uh, day of uh, called Indigenous Day, with many was celebrated, many was uh, respectful in that sense. We've had a lot of uh, uh, calls and, and uh, a lot of pictures sent our way about uh, people, what they've been doing on on that day. But uh, every day, it's a good day to be Indigenous. And every day is a good day. So we'll, we just like to uh, welcome you to another edition of the Seminole Nation Radio Program. I'm your host, Bo White Killer. Uh, still continuing on as in this COVID pandemic environment, mask on. Uh, washing hands, sanitizing, and hope you're doing the same. We'll talk a little bit about some of the spikes that came up and some of the information that came through us uh, regarding Seminole County. And uh, hopefully um, you, you guys remain safe and vigilant and, and don't give up the fight. Uh, but before we go on, uh, we'll have a little bit of information and uh, wanted to get some um, notices out. Uh, some calls came to our office and so I just wanted to share this information with you uh, regarding some passings that we had uh, recently. Uh, last week we lost um, uh, Louise Harjo from Spring Church. She departed this life on Wednesday, October 7th, 2020 at her home in Sasakwa. At the age of 87 years, she was born July 22nd, 1933 in Vamusa to the late Hexton Burgess and Wisey Low Cully. Louise was a member of the Spring Baptist Church where she served as women's leader. Her hobbies were cooking, baking, involved in all church activities. She enjoyed spending time with her family and friends and preceding Louise in death were her parents, husband Richard Harjo Sr. and daughter Sharon Johnson, son Gerald Harjo, grandson Stanley Dean, brother Alex Cully, and sister Florence Harjo. Survivors include children Richard Harjo Jr. and Kelly of Yukon, Oklahoma, Geraldine Harjo and husband Gene of Shawnee, Oklahoma, Marie Maldonado and husband Miguel uh, of Sasakwa, Sonia Harjo of Midwest City, and Brittany Harjo in Austin of Shawnee, Oklahoma. Sixteen grandchildren, numerous great-grandchildren, and great-great-grandchildren. Brother Wallace Cully of Conowal, sister Elvillan Burgess Punka of Shawnee, and Sue Givens of Vamus, Oklahoma, and a host of other relatives and friends. A private wake was held uh, with the Graveside Services on Saturday, October 10th. Spring Baptist Church Cemetery with Pastors Kellis Walker and Jay Downing officiating and the burial followed at uh, Spring Baptist Cemetery. Um, Lead on Timothy Alexander, age 55, went to be with his Lord and Savior October 9th, 2020 in Ada, Oklahoma. He was born May 15, 1965 in Tallahassee, Oklahoma to the late Reverend Leroy Alexander and Catherine Joe Hawkins Alexander. He was a graduate of Bowlegs High School and received a bachelor's degree from East Central University. Lee Don was a member and minister of Oak Fusky Baptist Church in Eufaula, Oklahoma. He loved talking about the Lord and getting people saved. His pastime was spent watching OU football and Thunder basketball games, where he enjoyed spending time with his family, friends, and grandchildren. He also loved to travel in his leisure time. Proceeding Lee Don in death, his parents, two children, Brandy and Kyle, brothers Roy, Bunny Yargy, and Philip Alexander. Those left to cherish his memories are three children, Donnell Alexander, Randy R. Alexander, and Cheryl Fields, all of Ada. Four grandchildren and a host of other relatives and friends. Honorary Paul Bearers will be uh, Edmund Fixco, Gerald McNack, Fred Lowe, Tommy Hawkins, and Toby Hill. Paul Bearers will be Ronnie Alexander, Ronnie Burnside, Robert Beaver, Trenton Wolf, Isaiah Rice, and Royce Osceola. 
Uh, today, the body will be taken to Middle Creek Number Two at 4 p.m. for a seven o'clock wake tonight at the ch uh, Middle, Creek, Middle Creek Number Two Church. Funeral services will be 2 p.m. Wednesday, October 14th at Middle Creek Number Two, with Reverend Thomas Little and Reverend Harold Williams and burial be at the Hawkins Family C Cemetery. Uh, just a quick note, personal note: um, having known both of the uh, the departed we we just just lift the families up we we know that uh during this time of uh pandemic you know there's a lot of time we don't get to spend together like we normally would or we have been known to do in our istijadi way of uh of helping and uh i know that uh the families of both uh cover your prayers and just hopefully that uh we once we get through this pandemic you know hugs aside uh, that we can continue to share, share that love and you know pay a visit and just do those things that we're normally used to do so at this time I'll just give a little honorarium for those that have lost and those that are in the hospital now they're continuing to fight uh, with this disease and other afflictions that are going on uh, we just give a moment of silence for all those Mado. Um, we have some information regarding some of our tribal members and doing great and wonderful things. Uh, I did see on the uh, social media uh, one person who actually, once she got this job, she actually started going and, and utilizing her uh, skill set in, in her new job to uh, um, go and assist a person out and uh, away from uh, her home base of where she worked out of. And just to give you a little insight... Uh, Oklahoma Indian Legal Services announces that Melanie Andrews is their new clinic student employee. She completed the OILS at ECU Native American Legal Clinic course last year. Uh, East Central is one of the few schools, I believe, that have a, a, a kind of a satellite office at their um, university, at a university, and it's uh, pretty unique. Uh, so Melanie completed this uh, legal clinic course last year. Uh, she is a senior at ECU, majoring in legal studies. Melanie is a citizen of the Seminole Nation, lives in Seminole, Oklahoma, and is a trained family divorce mediator and a certified basic civil mediator for the state of Oklahoma. This clinic at East Central serves both OILS clients and ECU faculty and students by OILS case assignment or clinics. This collabor collaboration is the first and only of its kind. Okay, let's stand corrected. Uh, this is uh, something unique within the uh, uh, legal area. So uh, they do have a well, they do have a website and they do have a phone number that you can contact. And a lot of the work that they do is pro bono, giving advice and uh, uh, legal services for uh, Native American uh, uh, clients. And so with that, it's you can go online at www oils o i l s online dot org w dot oils o i l s online dot org or contact five eight zero five five nine five eight four six that's five eight zero five five nine five eight four six this is out of east central and to kind of get back to what I was talking about what she did out of her out of her own uh, uh, newness at the job she went to Conwall to assist a client in a will and uh, it was a neat little picture of them, her and an assistant uh, standing in a um, dirt road uh, walking to a house, I'm sure, but uh, assisting a client with a will. So she was really get out and getting out and into her job and uh, providing initiative. So that's pretty good. Congratulations, Melanie. Have some birthdays today. We got uh, Renee birthdays today and upcoming and previous a couple of days in the past. Renee Conley Kelly. Uh, Mikey Sanchez, Jerry Harjo, Tilda Harjo, Joe Litka, Claudia Lena, Bobby Lena, and Sally Harjo. So happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. The Seminole Nation Tribal Employment Rights Office, Taro, has put out a new flyer and updating some of the information on their website. So if you are a business or an individual requiring Taro assistance, uh, check out the website at, at www.sno-nsn.gov and look up the tribal services and you'll see the tarot um, tab on there as well. T 
Tero, T-E-R-O, to assist tribal members, citizens, and construction companies to remain safe during the COVID-19 pandemic. The Tribal Employment Rights Office will utilize a new paperless system to receive and process applications. To Tarot certify your construction company will be quick and easy. And go to the website and you'll have a link there where you'll see business and individual applications. So if you are a business, you can go and uh, pull down the the tab and, and the application will be right there for you. Tribal members and or citizens that require employment assistance, work experience, or supportive services will need to complete an individual application. The process is quick and easy. Obtain and complete the application from the Seminole Nation website and then email the application to carter.v at sno-nsn.gov. Vashonda Carter, Director. Uh, taking, of the, taking a picture of the application and documents from your mobile phone will work perfectly. So... If you're not afforded a scanner or, or an email access, just take a picture of your completed application and send it to uh, Vashonda Carter at carter.v at sno sn.gov. If you don't have access to a computer or an internet, please contact the following number 405 257 7200 or email Vashonda at carter.v at sno sn.gov to request a paper application to be mailed. So again, you can contact the main tribal switchboard at 405-257-7200. Ask for Vashonda, pass the message, they'll pass the message along, and they can get an application ma- mailed to you. A couple of, uh, let's see, announcements will, on October 16th, October 16th will be the Sindoc will open up the hydroponics um, operation. The Sindoc has the op- operation out at uh, just west of uh, Seminole, uh, pretty cl- between Seminole and uh, S- Miccosukee Mission Ground, the aquaponics facility is out there. I can't remember what the uh, address was, uh, uh, um, but it was it's out there as you're going up from from uh, Richard's uh, Richard's uh, store, yeah. Convenience store all the way out to Miccosukee, halfway between there on your left side will be the aquaponics facility. And I'm, I'm going to have to get with uh, Rebecca Vota on that for the correct address. But they're going to be opening up on the 16th, I believe. They're having a full open house for anyone to come out the aquaponics facility. The 16th from 9 to 12, 9 to 12. So this is a new venture within the Seminole Nation. It uh, started many, many years back. I believe it was... Uh, uh, assistant chief had put out some information regarding uh, the possibility of doing it. It came to fruition, and years later, we now have an aquaponics facility that will produce uh, produce and garden varieties. Uh, and Re- Rebecca Votal will be heading up that operation. Uh, she she's she's been on the show before. She's very high voltage, a very good uh, person to talk with, knowledgeable in the uh, agriculture uh, realm, and. Uh, we look forward to uh, getting out there and checking it out so it'll be October 16th anybody's welcome uh, from 9 to 12 to check out the Sindoc aquaponics facility our uh, brothers and sisters in the Kickapoo tribe tribal health center I'm going to shout out to uh, Melanie up there sent us a flyer and asked that we uh, provide some information for our citizens down here if they want to check it out but today will be a Facebook and YouTube live stream. They had one at 9 o'clock this morning. The next one will be at 12 noon today and uh, one at 7 o'clock. If you go to the first ever virtual health fair by the Kickapoo Tribal Health Center, if you go to Facebook or YouTube and look up uh, OKKTHC, that's OKKTHC, if you search those, letters you will be uh, instantly shot to their virtual health fair so again that's on facebook and youtube ok k t h c and what they're going to have on these live streams is on, if you complete an online survey following the live stream you can earn gift bags and a chance for raffle prizes and be a part of our it says masquerade so i'm sure they're going to be doing a lot of uh pretty cool stuff on that so again kick put trouble health center virtual health fair today uh for the business ventures uh and entrepreneurs out there uh there is a native business virtual summit 
It'll be a live broadcast uh, November 17th through 20, 20th uh, this year with the theme Embracing Innovation to Empower Indian Country. This is a native virtual business summit. It um, says don't be late. Advanced registration rates expire October 16th. And this will be a another high voltage event with uh, speakers uh, Kevin Alice of the Native uh, ex Chief Executive Officer for the National Congress of American Indians and John Shotton, Tribal Chairman of the Oto Missouri Tribe. A lot of, I'm looking at the flyer right now, and there's a lot of uh, uh, Native leaders out there to be providing uh, their experience and their wherewithal to starting businesses and uh, uh, enabling businesses. So check it out. We'll put all the information, of course, on our Facebook page and uh, social media outlets. And uh, just contact the office if you need any more. Uh, the host for this will be Carmen Davis. She's the founder and publisher, president of Native Business Magazine. And also Gary Davis, uh, founder, publisher, and CEO of Native Business Magazine. Now, Gary, I've had met him. He's, he's really an uh, exciting young man that's out there doing great things. Uh, many of you maybe remember, from, remember him from Indian in the Cupboard. He was the uh, Indian that was in the cupboard. But now he's taken it and uh, used media in, to his advantage and, and uh, just really exploited in a good way uh, native businesses and entrepreneurship. So, again, this is the Native Business Summit upcoming in November 17th, 20th. Um, also, Tip Tuesday, Dakota Fish, our, our wellness tech out at the Chafikni Di Diabetes uh, Center. Uh, he's given us some tips. Uh, going to read a little bit about tips for a better fitness today. So he said, good morning. Here's some tips for a better fitness. Whether you're running two miles or taking a five-minute walk, you can't go wrong by moving. Always remember, any workout is better than the one that didn't happen. Hmm, I'm going to say that again. Yeah, always remember, any workout is better than the one that didn't happen. So have a good day. Ten tips for better fitness. You can accomplish a lot in 30 minutes. Micro workouts count. Weight loss will happen slowly. Fueling workouts is important. The key is to keep coming back. Plan work well for motivation. And you can't go wrong by moving. The best workout is the one you enjoy. Yoga is harder and more effective than you think. And finally, knowing the basic moves is really all you need. So Dakota Fish, exercise specialist out there at Chafikni. You'll also see him on some of the... Uh, 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 videos that Mark uh, Williams, our resident media specialist, produces. And he's uh, started assembling a bunch of uh, videos that they're doing online that you can access through the social media sites and soon to be on their YouTube channel that they'll have by themselves. So that's the Diabetes Crew out there doing great, wonderful things. Uh, how about these? How about this? The Oklahoma State Public... Oklahoma State School Board Notice Association notifies Seminole Public Schools moved to a red county. Now this is pretty important because I know, in effect, uh, coming from Kanawha, uh, we had some instances where uh, uh, it just spiked. It was just a real, really quick spike in, in one group of uh, students there at Kanawha. And uh, they had to be quarantined and notified, but the school kept going on. But um, we're starting to see this even more so. Um, with our recent uh, football football team and a football game was canceled so a lot of this is going on we're seeing it a lot in the state but uh, this is from a the RN who notified uh, Seminole Public Schools that they were in a red county according to the Oklahoma State School Board Association COVID-19 map for the Oklahoma school safety protocol uh, some questions that were that we have received is that what does this mean for our school and so uh, just check with your school advisors because every school is different on how they react to the COVID, but it's basically the same and, and try to isolate and, and um, do some contact tracing on that. So, you know, as we continue to move on, they're doing, everybody does the best they can with what they got and how we're moving it. Uh, and to kind of go with that, small towns, uh, again, these are uh, headlines I'm taking from the Seminole producer. Small towns, suburbs across state lead weekly hotspots. So small towns and suburbs across the state were among the top hotspots for the coronavirus as past infections in several prisons appeared to decline. Total number of coronavirus cases passed 97,000 on Friday with the state recording highs of new daily cases, active cases, and hospitalizations. 
So far, 1,091 Oklahomans have died from the COVID-19, according to the Oklahoma State Department of Health. Again, those numbers will change as they update their uh, numbers at 11 o'clock. So, you know, just uh, keep that mask on, wash your, wash your hands, wash your face, wash your chib. All right, Monday, uh, Wednesdays and Fridays, the Seminole Nation Adult Education has free GED classes at 215 East Evans in Seminole. So uh, if you want to go from Monday through Thursday, uh, please call, uh, by appointment only, please call 405-716-6041. 716 That's the Adult Education free GED classes in downtown Seminole. And finally, I think we have a, this is pretty much hot off the press. Uh, so you guys, I may be the first one that's announcing it throughout Indian country. So I feel uh, an obligation to get every enunciation part correct on this. But uh, October 13th, this was a press release from the Oklahoma uh, Tribal Nations Intertribal Council. And this went on last week. Normally the Intertribal Council, when it happens, it meets at one resort uh, host nation. Well, we'll uh, provide uh, uh, a place for everybody to come meet for about three days and talk about different items that uh, affect Indian country within our five tribes. And this was a virtual event this past week. The communications department, we were con considered administration support, so we had our virtual Zoom meeting on Wednesday. And then the remainder is administrative and, and uh, discussion on events. But this is a press release that came out. Uh, and it just uh, is brand new. So here's what it says. Uh, dated October 13, 2020. The Intertribal Council United in Reservation Status. Durant, Oklahoma. Tribal leaders of the Choctaw, Cherokee, Chickasaw, and Muscogee Creek and Seminole Nations unanimously passed a resolution opposing any efforts to de-establish Indian reservations at the Intertribal Council of the Five Civilized Tribes this on Friday, October 9th. The tribes were united in their view that the recent McGirt decision affirmed that a reservation was established for the Muscogee Creek Nation and never de-established by Congress and given their shared legal histories, the reservations of all five tribes remain intact today. Leaders of the Eastern Oklahoma tribes logged in from across the state as a safeguard against COVID-19, which continues to affect all people within the tribal boundaries of the Cherokee, Chickasaw, Choctaw, and Muscogee Creek and Seminole Nations. Principal Chief of the Cherokee Nation, Chuck Hoskin Jr., who serves as president of the Intertribal Council, called the meeting to order and recognize that a quorum of the board was present. Quote, what an extraordinary calendar year it's been, unquote. He said that the Choctaw Nation served as host of the event. A report was delivered. A report was delivered by Eddie Streeter, Eastern Regional Office Director for the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Streeter noted that among many cooperative efforts between the BIA and tribes, that 166 firefighters have been dispatched to help extinguish the record-breaking wildfires in western states, as well as 21 local fires. Rear Admiral Travis Watts of Oklahoma City, the Oklahoma City Area Director for Indian Health Service, gave an update on tribes coordinating tribal coordination noting that 179,000 COVID-19 tests have been dispensed with 123,000 being given by the five tribes. More funds to help tribes deal with the pandemic is expected, he said. But his most notable statement came when he said a coronavirus vaccine will likely be available in Indian country by mid to late December 2020. Colonel Lance Fry, Oklahoma Commissioner of Health, served as a representative for Governor Kevin Stitt's office. The state follows the John Hopkins model of tracking the effects of COVID-19, which he said explains why the state numbers may look different from other charts. Fry also made clear that he does not expect Governor Stitt to will issue a mandate for all citizens to wear masks, opting instead for that decision to be made at the local level. Updates were given on the state by each member tribe by Muscogee Creek Nation Chief David Hill, Choctaw Nation Chief Gary Batten, Seminole Nation Chief Greg B. Chilcote, Governor Anna Tubby, and Principal Chief Hoskin. The ITC leaders addressed how their tribes were handling the recent spike in COVID-19 federal funds to assist with the health and economic needs caused by the coronavirus, the U.S. Census, and continued growth among the tribes. 
Governor Anatoby made the notable announcement that Chickasaw Nation had obtained four tracts of land that are set to become trust properties with gaming facilities. Two of the tracks along the Red River are already in trust, and two slated for trust are along Highway 70 at Lake Murray and Lake Texoma. Principal Chief Hoskin echoed others in re recognizing that February marked the 70th anniversary of the Intertribal Council. Quote, it is a testament of our remarkable, tremendous success. We are united, such as on the Gaming Compact, unquote, he said. <clears throat> other resolutions passed by the tribal leaders were, one, a resolution encouraging or surrounding our surrounding communities and neighbors to join us in celebrating Native American Day and Native American Heritage Month. The second Monday in October is Native American Day in Oklahoma, and November is Native American Heritage Month nationwide. A resolution urging the Department of Treasury to immediately release the remaining coronavirus relief funds set aside for Indian Country. According to the August 2020 Treasury Statement of Accounts, 534 million awaits disbursement to the tribes. A resolution supporting extension of the co deadline to expend coronavirus relief fund dollars and additional federal care COVID-19 relief funding. The federal form formula used to de determine CARES Act funding grossly undercounted tribal populations with members of the five tribes council among those most undercounted and underserved by this funding according to a Harvard University study. Again, this is the, the Intertribal Council of the Five Civilized Tribes, an organization comprised of the Cherokee, Chickasaw, Choctaw, Muscogee Creek, and Seminole Nations, representing 790,000 tribal citizens throughout the United States. So that was the press release from a Friday meeting. Again, this will be all posted up on our Facebook and uh, social media sites, as well as the uh, YouTube sites as well. Um, I think that's about it. We got a few things that we need to mop up. Uh, we are, as far as information that's coming from the complex, the reopening has, and when I say reopening, is, it's just, I'm talking about the complex facility, uh, has, has begun. We are still uh, continuing to uh, address uh, areas that, of uh, safety and, and health for our employees, as well as uh, services provided. So more information will be upcoming and be put, put out as far as the openings and reopenings and uh, the way forward uh, and utilizing services. Um, with that, I think we're going to go ahead and close it out. Um, if you have any things you want to push, things you need to push out or information to push out, just contact Seminole Media at gmail.com, the Seminole Media at gmail.com, or call our office phone, that's 405-382-1010. Uh, Leave a message, and uh, we'll get back with you. Uh, be kind to one another. Be nice. Uh, be classy. Let's uh, represent and uh, get prepared to vote. Make sure your grass is cut, and above all else, uh, love one another. With that, we'll say Mado to KWSH 1260 here and 97.7 for the facility use. And we'll see you next week. I don't see you chocolate.